Mr. President, I rise today in strong support of General Abizaid's confirmation to be our ambassador to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It took this administration nearly two years to even nominate someone to this critical position, and unfortunately, we have seen the results of the absence of serious, experienced U.S. leadership. I was pleased that the Senate Foreign Relations Committee expeditiously moved his nomination. In the past two years, we have seen Saudi leadership take actions that have seriously strained the U.S.-Saudi relationship and that run fundamentally counter to basic international norms. Saudi Arabia has detained and reportedly tortured members of its own royal family, effectively abducted the Lebanese prime minister. In Yemen, the Crown Prince's coalition has led an offensive responsible not just for breeding the world's worst humanitarian crisis, but also potentially opening the door for more malign Iranian influence. And to this day, we seek accountability for the brutal murder of American resident and journalist Jamal Khashoggi. With the White House conducting freelance diplomacy, the American people have little faith that there has been serious pressure on Saudi leadership to correct course. Worse, we continue to learn that the administration appears to be rewarding the kingdom with secret side deals in support of its nuclear program, far outside the scope of legally prescribed processes. Amid all of this, we must find a way to get the U.S.-Saudi relationship back on course, as we do continue to share some common challenges and interests. But the United States alliances are strongest with partners with whom we share values and with whom we can have honest conversations. General Abazid faces a tall challenge, but I believe he's up to the job. He has the experience and leadership necessary to both manage a large mission and get the currently fraught relationship with Saudi Arabia back on track in a way that both advances our security interests and stays true to our ideals. I urge my colleagues to support General Abazid's confirmation, his leadership, his deep regional expertise, management skills, knowledge of Arabic, and experience serving in conflict areas will make him an effective U.S. ambassador to Saudi Arabia. Now, before I yield my time, I want to spend a moment on the issue of judicial nominees, specifically the President's nominee for the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Oklahoma, Mr. Patrick Wyrick. Mr. Wyrick's record suggests he's little more than a right-wing crusader in the war against the reproductive rights of women. In 2014, he spearheaded an amicus in the Sibelius versus Hobby Lobby case, arguing that corporations' religious rights were violated by the Affordable Care Act's requirement that employer health plans cover birth control. By a five to four margin, the Supreme Court agreed. Likewise, while representing Oklahoma in Pruitt versus Nova Health Systems, Mr. Wyrick defended a law mandated in women seeking abortions to first submit to an ultrasound. Fortunately, the Oklahoma Supreme Court struck down that law. I could go on, but the bottom line is that Mr. Wyrick embodies President Trump's pledge to only nominate judges committed to rolling back reproductive rights, even if they are seriously unqualified for lifetime appointments. Now, let's be honest about why Republicans seek to confirm these judicial nominations at record speed. After being punished at the polls for their assault on affordable health care, they want our courts to do their dirty work for them. How convenient it is that Republicans can confirm judges with hostile records on health care even as they distance themselves from the Trump administration's reckless decision to cast the entire Affordable Care Act as unconstitutional, including the law's protections for patients with pre-existing conditions, the tax credit to help families afford premiums, the expansion of Medicaid, and so much more. I'm tired of watching the majority stack our courts in favor of wealthy special interests, even as they know full well that Americans overwhelmingly oppose that morally bankrupt agenda. Americans oppose, once again, letting health insurance companies discriminate against people with pre-existing conditions. They oppose their plan to end Medicaid as we know it and their trillion dollar tax cuts for big corporations. They oppose the president's assault on the rights of consumers, workers, students, and women. 
Democracy is supposed to be a battle of ideas. But when it comes to health care or student loan debt or climate change, the Republican Party does not have any. And when you can't win on the merits, what do you do? You tip the scales of justice in your favor. Well, I, for one, will not stay silent. I'll continue to speak out against unqualified nominees like Patrick Weirich. And I'll continue to vote against judges whose views are grossly out of step with the vast majority of Americans on everything from the environment to women's reproductive rights to health care for all. With that, Mr. President, I yield my time and observe the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander.